Labrador, wild, majestic, breathtaking. Labrador is truly one of the last wild frontiers on this planet. This rugged landscape, dotted with thousands of rivers and lakes, is a fly fisher's nirvana. For me, one river in particular has been the focus of much dreaming and fantasy. A river that has one of the best runs of Atlantic salmon in the world. A place where huge salmon will eagerly come to a dry fly. That dream location, the Lewis River. The salmon here are curious. Territorial. And very, very aggressive. For those that love the visual ecstasy of seeing a salmon taking down a dry fly, this is it, the best of the best. Lewis River Lodge is also the ultimate experience, an experience beyond compare. For anglers with a bucket list, Lewis River is one place you must go before you die. This is the ultimate in Atlantic salmon fishing, truly the best of Labrador. This is the ultimate in Atlantic salmon fishing and truly some of the best of Labrador. Come join me on my dry fly fantasy trip to the Lewis River in Labrador. Atlantic salmon, this is my addiction. And to catch them on dry flies, it doesn't get any better. With that in mind, I'm heading to Labrador to visit the St. Louis River Lodge as a guest of Chris Verbisky, owner of Atlantic River Outfitters Company. For years, I've heard about the legendary runs of Atlantic salmon this river receives. To say I was excited would be a vast understatement. All right. That was fantastic. I was about to live a dream. I had to pitch to him quite a few times to get him to come up. Oh, this is good fish, too. <laughs> How fantastic is this? The St. Louis River Lodge is located in southeastern Labrador, approximately 290 kilometers, or 180 miles, southeast of Goose Bay. Access to the lodge is via a one and a half hour helicopter flight. This flight alone is very special. A breathtaking aerial trip of the wilderness of southern Labrador. Chris spoke to me about dry fly techniques 
that work on the Lewis River. So Chris, one of the things I think a lot of people find fascinating, especially from a dry fly perspective, is that usually everybody's thinking in terms of presentation, a dead drift technique, but you're being really active with your fly, uh, trying to agitate the salmon to come up and at least look at your fly or show themselves. Can you explain what you're doing and how you're doing it? So what we had a few days back, we had some uh, big storms come through and it popped the river. Um, and we, we can see all this foam on the water. So I'm shooting for the, uh, shooting for the windows, the clear windows, and just giving it a little bit of action to drag it through the foam lines. And typically the salmon, when, it, when, the, uh, when the fly comes into those uh, clear windows, the salmon has an equal opportunity to be able to take the fly. And I find giving it that little bit of extra action uh, induces the salmon up to it. Now, do you think it, when it's skating on the top like that, is that mimicking a caddis and they trigger something from their uh, memory of when they were young? I think it's a valid point. I think what, uh, what's happening here, it looks like, a, it looks like a, uh, a bug trying to swim ashore, swim out of the tide. Yeah. And I think that, you know, I, I've seen it happen so often with these salmon where uh, you put a little bit of action on and uh, compared to a dead drift in certain, certain circumstances, and the, the salmon will just ignite on it. Now, are there times that you want to use a dead drift presentation and not put this type of action on it? This water will be in prime condition by tomorrow. It'll be another 24 hours for it to, to drop into a reasonable level. And that's when we'll start doing a lot of more dead drifting than, than twitching. Good job. Finally got him to come up. Oh, it's a nice one. Nasty. Yeah, just that perfect window came through. I've got one down here. There's two or three of them that keep jumping, but they can't see my fly. Oh, Jesus. that's a nice fish. Now, you're using 10-pound test? Oh, popped out. Yeah. But you're using 10-pound test, is ten, that right? 10-pound, yeah. Yeah, OK. Yeah. It's, the water's a little stiff to be using eight. Typically, we use eight-pound. OK. And that just pops out. Now, are you using barbless or barb? Uh, Typically bar barbless? Barbless. So yeah. they're, they're barb hook, but you squat the barb. OK, great. Yeah. And then when you have something like that, you're going to lose a few fish. But that's, a, that's part of it, though, and we don't do damage to the no, fish, right? No. You know, the dry fly fishing is, is uh, it's absolutely fantastic here. Uh, it's, it's a rough day when we put on wet flies, uh, which is virtually never. Um, you know, you skate these flies, dead drift them down through the pool, and it's also visual. The salmon is always coming to the, to the surface for the fly, and uh, that's why we market ourselves as a dry fly destination. Um, you'll have a tough time getting a guide to put on a wet fly for you here. He showed himself to me about three casts before. I saw the tail come up. He came out and looked at it. Oh. OK, you hold on to my shoulder. Okay. Ready? Yep. I think he's almost ready. No, I think he's ready for one more jump. Let's see. Whoa. There we go. OK. I won't. Okay, better real quick. There you Good. Go. Nice. Here she goes. All right. Gliding off. Slimy hand. No. Good job, Colin. Okay. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> It is. It's very special. It's, uh, it's in southern Labrador. Uh, we're adjacent to the Straits from a regional perspective, which has you know, hundreds of icebergs, hundreds of whales um, coming back into the, the, the fishing here. Um, the anglers have great experience here on the river. Um, as you indicated, we can hook fish before breakfast, go have our breakfast, come back down for another session. So it's, it's not long sessions, it can be as long as you want. Um, you can lounge around on the, on the patios, watch other anglers. Um, and it's a pool that you don't need to be a great caster. Children can come here and cast 10 feet of line, 5 feet of line, and hook fish right on the shoreline here. Oh. 
This is an incredible pool. Incredible fish. Let's see if I can tail this. You know something? I didn't let you tail it. Because I can't get it in close enough with this current. Get the, I'll get the head up. There you go. Got it? All right. It was Chris Verbisky's dream to build a luxury lodge in the wilds of Labrador on the edge of a world-class Atlantic Salmon River. A lodge unlike any other in Eastern Canada. Chris has achieved this goal, but it was not fast, nor was it cheap. It took years to build this facility in this location. There are no nearby roads here. The net result? A quality lodge that is absolutely spectacular. Yes, it's expensive, but for those who want the very best, this is it. They're all big fish. They are. I got them. You got them? Okay, let's get his head up. Oh, I think that's our first grills, is it? It is, too. A little bigger than the grills, is it? Uh, it's, a, it's a healthy grills. Yeah. Gotta go. Coming back towards me. That was an incredible take. And you know the amazing part? It's like a foot away from the shoreline. And I kid you not, the salmon was probably no more than two feet of water. And I skated it past the rock edge just, it's just before dark. We're getting ready. Oh, look at that. We're getting ready to have a some marshmallows by the fire. And this is how I'm gonna end my day. Oh no, oh, it's coming right at me. Looks to be about an eight pound salmon. He's jumped about four or five times now. I'm using 10 pound tippet. So I can get over here. There's a nice little beach over here and I'm gonna land him. Unfortunately, they had a net. Guess we fell into this pool. We don't have a net anymore. I mean, how much fun is this? How much fun is this? Catch salmon on a dry fly, beautiful river. And the amazing part of the Labrador, no bugs. Look at this fish. How's that for a nice salmon? You see, I got the leader wrapped around him. Not too bad. You get the fly out and get them back in the water, and that water is cold. Whoa. Leader off them, put them in. Won't take long to revive in this cold water. And there he goes. I always think that, you know, the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence and, uh, you know, I've spent over the last, well, almost 25 years in Labrador um, exploring. And, of course, we've had great fishing here uh, during that time. But you always read books, or I've always read books, and, and you think that, okay, we got to get, we got to do Norway, we got to do Scotland, we got to do Russia, we got to do Patagonia. And you start fishing around the world and you realize what Labrador has to offer. It's a very special, unique place. It was the most subtle of takes. Oh, it's not a bad fish. Not huge, but it's a nice fish. Probably about eight pounds. How sweet is that? 
incredible thing is I've hooked this fish right at the base of where the lodge is. I literally had a cup of coffee, walked down here, grabbed my fly rod, and Chris and I came down here, started fishing. Five casts, six casts, I'm into a fish already. Look at that. Oh, how wonderful. Oh, beautiful. Chris, could I ask a favor? Would you mind tailing this fish for me? Absolutely. I think I put the glove right there. He's going for a little run here. Got it? Yep. Back off on the line a bit in case there's a run. Chris got a lot of experience handling the fish. All right. How fantastic is that? There we go. Okay. Got it? Yep. Nice. Nice oh. female. Beautiful. Wow. <laughs> Powerful release. The St. Louis River is mainly a dry fly river with very aggressive salmon, so the choice of flies is relatively simple. Bombers in a range of colors, with orange and brown being the favorites. On the very rare occasion you need a wet fly, Blue Charms and Green Highlanders would be a good choice. The equipment you need to bring is 9 foot stout action 8 or 9 weight rods and matched with reels with quality drag systems. The salmon here are large and extremely strong and that combined with the heavy current you need to bring quality equipment from reel to tippet material. It will all be tested to the max by these acrobatic salmon. The setup we used is a floating line to a 9 foot liter of straight 10 pound test, then to the fly. Alright Chris. Is that in front of the rock? No, it was right in tight to the uh, tight to the side here. Oh, so somebody, probably a fresh fish that moved up during well, the night? It must be, yeah. You know, I, I rose it about, uh, it came for the fly probably about six times. And just oh, have, that's a nice sized fish. Having to wait for the, the windows to come through to get the fly back to her in a sensible fashion. Now, can you explain a little bit of what you're doing in terms of fighting it? Because I notice you're pumping them a bit and you're doing a number of different actions to control the fish's head. I am. I'm wanting to keep my rod tip to the right here to keep it away from the rapids and to land her in this soft water. Because uh, if it goes down through the rapids, it's, uh, they're done. They're, or I'm done. Oh, right about on the shore there. Spectacular so, yeah, jump. We use the, the comer bus policy here. We don't want them to get on over the rapids. No. Now we were talking last night at dinner about the uh, famous uh, one minute per pound rule and how that's not really applicable. We want to get these fish in as quickly as possible and have them expend a minimal amount of energy. Um, how do you do that? What are some of the things you do? You know, and I think just play, play them hard. And uh, it's not like it's the last fish in the river. Um, play them hard, get them in and go again. Yeah. Uh, this is probably a 10 pound fish and it can't be more than three minutes here now. Well, she's more than 10. I'd say that's a 12, 12, 13 pound fish. Wow. Beautiful. There we go. It'll take long to revive this fish. Plenty of gas. Nice release. Good Thanks. job. Oh, Colin's oh, Col got a dog on. Oh, real? <laughs> oh, freight training, freight training, freight training. Oh, no. I don't think, Colin. My God, he's going to give it a try. Yeah. Be careful. Don't want to fall. Fall on those rocks. If he can get him down to that lower pool, he might save. Yeah. Him. Yeah. That's a nice fish. It is a nice fish. Like I say, they're all big fish here right now. It is. He might have them tamed. 
Like I was telling you that they oh. lost them. Oh, that's a heartbreaker after working like that. It's a nice fish. There we go. Atlantic salmon are no different than any other migratory fish with regards to where they will hold while in the river. Current seams are a prime area to look for fish. A current seam is where two currents of differing speeds meet. Water deflecting around rocks will cause these current seams and offer ideal holding places for fish. The rock can be fully submerged and still offer this protection. Like many lies in large pools, sometimes the fish will be pointed downriver in a back eddy. Often, these lies are literally within a foot of the bank. In 2011 and 2012, the lodge began using sturdy, self-bailing NRS angling rafts to further explore the river above and below the falls. This had never been done before. The rafts prove an ideal way to explore the river and for locating additional holding pools. For many anglers, this is a great means of further searching this wild river in safety. Nice fish. Took him right in the edge here. Oh, look at that jump. Oh, just a fresh fish. Another one. So we're into jump number seven or eight now. I'm trying to keep him away from the current. He gets out here in the current and gets down the river. I'm going for a run. Oh, the agony of defeat. I've lost so many fish on this trip, but that's Atlantic salmon fishing. And that's one of the reasons why I love the challenge. One of the things that you hear me saying throughout this show and other shows is buying quality tippet and leader material because it's so important, especially when you're fishing in tough conditions. We have a lot of rocks here. You saw how the fish are big. They're running around these rocks. There's a lot of abrasion on your leader. If you have a poor quality one, it's gonna break on you and you could lose that fish of a lifetime. But what I want to talk about right now, besides the quality issue, is the type of leader. Here, you know, it's amazing. Most people think about tapered leaders when they think about dry flies. They don't use them here. In fact, they don't encourage them. Uh, what they want you to do is just use a straight piece of 10 pound mono right to your fly. And that's what I've got. Eight to 10 feet is what the common leader is here. No tippet, this is it. Right to my fly, and it works. I'll tell you something, I'm using an eight weight rod, uh, Chris is using a seven weight rod, and it's working fine casting these flies. I think one of the reasons is because they're not that big, and we're able to tuck it underneath the wind if it comes up, we can do good presentations, but simple is what's needed. And I had the one guy tell me if you have uh, leaders with knots in it, it's the worst thing because a lot of the times there's drag induced by the current here on your fly, which of course ruins your presentation. Well, it's the end of my trip. I can't believe it. Four days have gone so fast. Isn't that always the case when you're having a great time? I want to thank Chris and Jennifer Verbisky and their young daughter, Nicola, for having me here. I've had a great time. I've learned so much about the fishing on the Lewis River. And I'll tell you something, if you get a chance to come to this place, you'll never regret it. To learn more about this show, go to our website, thenewflyfisher.com. And you can also go to our Facebook page and see what we're up to. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. We hope you enjoyed sharing my trip to a legendary lodge on a world-class river. Songwriter John Lane wrote and sang a beautiful ode to the Lewis. We shall end on his beautiful sounds and say farewell. Through the valley below, from my window on her brow, I can see the white waterfalls and the rushing wind falls through the tops and amidst all the trees. All the diamonds and gold cannot buy it For it's worth all 
more than money can share And my heaven is here on the Lewis River In the heart of the great Labrador The rocks, tall and slender Sits by her sides like a robe fit for a king. Her streamlined with color that sparkles.